Oh. One problem with this stuff. Oh. There it is. He was like, hey, clear some space on the table. I got a surprise for you. It's probably not really a surprise for me, but I don't really know what to expect. So let's see what's gonna happen. What is this? Oh, look at those. What the heck? When'd you get those in? Today. So for the people, what are we looking at? Let's do a whole mock-up. A whole mock-up. But, <laughs> but wait, there's more. I did, I moved it. Oh boy. No kidding. That's so cool. Don't fail me, hold on. Oh. <laughs> oh. One problem with this stuff. Oh. There it is. Oh my god. Look at that thing in all of its beauty. There we go. That's so cool. You know what it is yet? <laughs> it did. Yeah, that's an electric battery. <laughs> What's this? That's for the axle, so that's gonna be for... What's that? That I can't tell you. Well, that goes to the wheel. Okay. <laughs> I yes. was like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that is. That's so, so cool. This is the hybrid system that we've been designing for years. Uh, gears are, <clears throat> we have to send them out for one more final polish, but they fit the motor. That's so crazy. Yep. You guys so, have been designing that for a couple of years? Yeah, I started designing it with Tim last year. Um, we got the concept from working with the Palatov dudes in 2019. So here we are, almost 2021. But once we get these back from final, um, final polish, we can then build the cases, which we've got the cases designed, but we're gonna double check lash and all of that once the final polish is done before we build the cases. So just in case things didn't come out as that's so cool initially designed, but to build the cases, cases will bolt to the motors. And then from there, once we have the cases done, this is gonna fit in Beastie. So this will be, well, say right now, that would be the front of the car. This would be the passenger rear wheel. And then this motor is gonna be direct. I, I, we have two motors. <clears throat> the other motor is going to be the other direction. So we'll have vectoring and all kinds of fun stuff. Oh my gosh. So, <clears throat> um, Cox Machine, um, they're the ones that are doing all the, all the work and you need to free up space. We still have a little bit of a bill on there, but I've got enough other work for him, which you'll find out later. So he knows he's getting paid. So he let me take it so he could free up some space. That's so cool. Yep. Look at that. Let's we'll see it like in real life. Oh, I bet. I mean, I'd be more excited is it. the first time I push that gas pedal and <laughs> see both the rear wheels spinning. And at that point, we'll be doing a dyno. Um, the dyno is weird because it has to have RPM, which is, I think, either way, I'd be able to sync it with. So we'd be able to actually get a rear axle 
power member on the dyno. So it's gonna be a lot of torque and probably not a lot of horsepower. How are you gonna do that with this dyno? Just don't run the front. Don't start the engine. Oh, so you can just literally yeah, just back it on. Okay, I was like, I was confused yeah. for a second. I was like, wait a second, how are you going to do that? So the way that the, part of the reason it's taken so long to design is there's software side of things, which I'm not doing. Um, the people we have other people involved with that. So there's a touch screen that you can do all kinds of stuff with. Um, for instance, say it starts raining in the middle of your run, say at Pike's Peak, you can turn down regen. So when you hit the brakes, so it doesn't lock up the rear as hard, and you can do that with a slide bar. No kidding. And you can do all, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, we're gonna have a, a YouTube mode. I'm gonna call it YouTube mode where flip a switch, clap your hands, stop your feet. <laughs> when you floor it, the rear wheels will spin opposite of the front. So that way you do crazy donuts. <laughs> yes. So that's, 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 that's last on the list of software development. But yes. um, yeah, there'll be torque factoring. Um, parameters put in there so turn the wheel then you know inside and out wheel out, inside and outside wheels spin differently um you can turn power up and down you know all kinds of stuff so that's so cool and uh, the cool thing with the hybrid is charging it is it sucks it takes a long time but you know say you're at a time attack and you got to scrub some tires in or something so you go out for some practice laps Beep, beep, you know, do the touch thing and you can do full regen. So the gas engine is going to be pulling you along, dragging the rear wheels. Obviously, it won't be locking them up, but you can charge up the battery while you're just driving along. And then when you do your your power session on the time attack, you'll have full juice. That's cool. Whereas a full electric car, you're going to sit there and charge. That's so freaking cool. So, I'm excited. But just so everybody is aware, um, we should have 200 horsepower, so 100 horsepower each motor. Notice I said motor, not engine. We do have to differentiate because there is an engine and motors aboard. So 100 horsepower per motor and the torque, they'll output 560 foot pounds of torque. What that's gonna generate to you at the wheel, I don't know. We'll find out when we do the dyno. It's probably gonna be three or 400 foot pounds of torque. I was, I was actually curious about that too. Like what's the drive train loss? Quote I unquote. don't know, it's it's weird because, so the motor itself puts out uh, 90 foot pounds, but because we're reducing on a three to one ratio, you can multiply torque, but I don't think it's a straight conversion if that makes sense. Yeah. So we'll find out, It's gonna you're gonna feel it. I mean, you'll be able to drive this thing around, the rear wheel drive only, which is gonna be another mode of the touchpad. You know, go through the drive through silent. <laughs> it should still do, it should still accelerate really, really quickly just on the electric motor alone, electric motors alone. So, um, COVID slowed everything down, especially on the software side of things because they're in the Pacific Northwest and they've been just brutally locked down up there. So, um, we've got deposits down and the battery and the software, the battery control module, they call it BMI, they call it. Um, that's all integrated into a simple battery pack. So in, the, in this case, it's a 120 pound pack. Um, so it's gonna be, you know, size of a fuel cell or, or smaller. Uh, we can mount that almost wherever we want. So you, that way. It's 120 per like nope. setup or Sit, the whole thing? The, the whole battery pack's 120 pounds. Gotcha, okay. So, and that's gonna be enough for nine kilowatt hours if I remember right. So not very, uh, not, not, it's not a very big battery pack. Um, Sorry, the battery pack's nine kilowatt hours size. At full chat, I wanna say it's good for eight or nine minutes, I think is what it was. Not here for a long time, but a good time. Yep. But in hybrid, you're- Constantly. With programming, with all that, you're not gonna be using it all the time. Yeah. So once you're you know, 120 miles an hour, there's really no need to spin these anymore. Um, so the, the aim is to get out of the hole as quickly as possible. Same thing as um, Le Mans. I mean, they don't spin the hybrids at 200 miles an hour. I'm sure they could, but they don't. So they just use it, get out of the hole, and then recharge under braking, just to maximize acceleration and efficiency. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do another segment on this when we get the gears back from final polishing. And then once we have, yeah, once we have the cases done, we'll, I'll get right into fitting this into Beastie, so. 
with COVID, it locked down our season this year. And with this stuff still in the hopper, I decided we're just gonna set, we're, we're not gonna do anything to this year. I didn't touch it really. Um, we had a sponsor contract up until May and then the sponsor sold out. So we decided to just not touch the car until this stuff was ready and we're gonna do it all at once. I was about to say that. I mean, I remember you and I were talking about it super early. It's a, it's understandable. Yep. I mean, I, I would have done the same thing if I Con were in your shoes. Just concentrate on the business and just keep keep moving. And um, this could potentially, the aim with this, obviously is to build a fun car. Two, second, this may this will fit in the NV8 on, on the front wheels. Um, not sure we want to put that much weight into it. I mean, all in, it's 350 pounds. So it's not light. I mean, it, it's all right, but it's not crazy light. Um, but this will be a package that you can put in, into any undriven car, any undriven axle car. So Civic, you put it on the rear wheels. MR2, NSX, you can put it on the front wheels. Obviously, you're gonna have to integrate the axle side of things, make it fit out here. But that's our goal is to have almost that kind of a drop-in unit. And until electric cars become light enough, this might bridge the gap between full electric and the gas cars that exist now. And that will continue to exist. Huh? <laughs> what? Can you imagine what BC's gonna be like with two of those bad boys in the rear? Like you said, YouTube mode and donuts? The thing's already crazy enough with its arrow. Now we're gonna throw some batteries in it? Sure, why not? YouTube's not ready for that. I'm not ready for that, but I'm excited. I really cannot wait. I know he's been talking to me about it a super long time, and that's super. Blah, I'm just lost for words. I'm excited. So. Now we're gonna get back into the cage and I'm gonna keep drooling over that while he's working on it.